Greetings, everyone. This is Mr. Perry, your AST 111, 111A instructor. And I want to point out a few equations uh, that you're going to be using uh, from Chapter 4. And these four equations are going to be Kepler's third law, which is put in your, in your textbook is put in terms of years and astronomical units. The second one is going to be Newton's second law of motion, which says that F, which is net force, is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the object. The third one is the law of gravity. This has also been credited to Isaac Newton, where the force of gravity is equal to the negative of some value g multiplied by m, which is a mass, multiplied by m, which is another mass, divided by r squared, which is going to be the distance in between these masses, m and the big m and little m. G, everybody, right on the side here. G is a number equal to this. Six point six seven ten negative six point six seven, sorry, ten to negative eleven Newtons times meter squared over kilogram squared. Where in our in physics or rather the SI system of units. The Newton represents the uh, unit of force. Meters, of course, is the unit of length squared divided by kilogram squared. Now, it's a more simplified version of the units, but, but for right now, I'm going to stick with these set of units. You can also uh, look up other sources uh, between your textbook and online sources, and you'll find a similar number. So, or you'll find the same number. So, therefore, this number multiplied by any mass um, any product of masses divided by the distance in between the masses, namely the centers of the masses, that will give you the force of gravity between any two masses. So basically what Newton's saying is, everybody, if I had two different masses, I'm going to say this is big M, this is little m, and the distance in between them, this is going to be R. So what happens is that the distance in between these masses dictates how strong the gravitational force is. And the product of the masses, in other words, how much mass you have, also dictates how strong the gravitational force is between the two masses. And let's also note that gravity is always attractive. So you don't have any repulsion with gravity. You only have attraction. Last but not least, this last equation is going to be the velocity of a circular orbit, which is going to be square root of that constant, and again, everybody, this constant, g, is known as the universal gravitational constant. You take that constant, multiply it by the mass of, not the mass of the object that you're, talking about the, that you're trying to calculate the speed of, but the mass of wherever, uh, object, wherever object that particular mass is orbiting. So let's imagine that m is orbiting big mass m. What happens is, is that I want to get the a speed of little m. In order to get the speed of little m, I have to I have to uh, get the mass of big M, the object that is orbiting around. Take that, multiply it by this constant g, and divide that by the distance in between the masses. And then I take the square root of that product, or really the square root of rather this product divided by the r, which will give me the square root of actually the quotient. So, just to reiterate again, these are your four equations that you'll need for chapter four. And I went through this very quickly and I might have glossed over a few details. So if anybody has any further questions concerning these four equations, you can ask me either email or you can um, call me uh, by my extension 963 here at LCC. Or you can also visit, uh, if you're on campus, for example, you can visit me in my office. Thank you.